What well, I'm left with this is George G, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Juby Vilsius. Juby, are you ready to do this? Yes, I'm ready. Thanks, George, right. for having me. Excited to have you on. Juby is an IT career genie. He's the founder of Yellowtail Tech. They're an organization that helps train thousands of people with zero IT experience, make major career pivots, and successfully land high-paying jobs. Juby, tell us a little about your personal life, some more about your work, and what you, why you do what you do. Yeah, thanks for having me again, um, um, George. So a little bit of my personal life. So I have a background in management information system. And after college, I realized um, despite the fact of having a degree in IT, I needed something more to be relevant to the job market. Uh, I was looking around and found um, Linux system administration in general. So after I learned more about um, Linux system administration to add an additional layer to my to my knowledge, a specific set of skills, because that's what I didn't have. I had a degree, but I didn't have a specific set of skills to go sell to the market. I promised myself and my coach that I will turn this into an actual offering to, um, to make sure other people are able to take advantage of this. So um, eight years later, I actually started that and we started um, our company in 2016. We, we kind of started in 2014 um, a part-time and we started formally in 2016 and we specifically focus to, uh, on helping people with no IT background make the pivot into the IT industry. So our programs are intentionally slower. They, uh, they are tailored for people with no IT background because most programs, they accept people with no IT background but they don't necessarily design and tailor the programs for people with no IT background. We've taken slightly a different route by tailoring, by attracting, by only uh, focusing on people with no IT background. So uh, um, our program is unique in that sense. And we help people transition. And most people who come to us are people who are on their second career. So that's, that's what we do. We help people with no IT background break into the IT industry. Nice. I think that that's awesome. I'm all about how can we maximize our earning potential? You know, I, we spent so much of our lives working. So I, it makes sense to me that I'd want to make as much money as I possibly can, so long as I'm enjoying the work that I'm doing. So, so people come to you or they, 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 they come across you. Mm -hmm. I imagine that if I had no IT background, I might be nervous about my ability to learn the information yes and um most people that's what happens uh they're not sure if they are even the right fit so that's what our enrollment advisors um, spend their time doing is help our prospects evaluate if it's even a good fit because it's 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 not a transition that is suited for anyone um there are some things we we have to look at with you your availability, what are you trying to get out of this? And uh, make sure this is where you're trying to take your career, your next career. And uh, make sure you understand the, the potential new work environment. You're gonna be spending a lot of time with your computer. You're gonna most likely, especially nowadays, be spending uh, that time alone with your computer uh, because remote work is the new reality. So all of these we discuss with our prospects Make sure they understand that um, yes, there are great advantages with uh, um, a career that promotes remote work, but there there are some disadvantages as well. So we discuss all that. We make sure this is the right fit. But one thing I want to make sure everybody knows is that there is actually not only there is uh, well there is some correlation, but it's an inverse correlation between people with no IT background and people um, who actually are successful in my program. What I mean is people with no IT background, I have a better success rate with them than someone with some IT background or some uh, um, um, IT degree from 10 years ago that they come back. I have a better, I have a higher success rate with people that have absolutely no IT background that come to learn, that are eager to learn something and that come as a blank canvas. So uh, someone with no IT background, they shouldn't worry too much 
they should just make sure they do it for the right reason. Nice. I think that that is a, a thoughtful and striking. It seems like that's an appropriate way to think about it. You don't want to just shoehorn people into your course, just, you know, because it's not going to be a very, very successful experience for, for anybody. With no experience, is that just because they come in with, with fewer assumptions and sort yes. of old habits? Yes, fewer assumptions. And not only that, um, because they also come with no knowledge of the material, they don't assume, if someone has some IT background, they kind of get it and they think that's enough. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of get the concept, so let's keep moving. But the person with no IT background, they want to dive in. They want to understand everything. They want to soak up as much as possible. And this is the attitude that's necessary. So um, the person with um, some IT background, they question everything. They question the process. They they don't put in that much uh, effort into the process. So they, they tend to botch it. Uh, so that's why um, we, we really insist. We don't push away people with some IT background, but we really make sure they understand in what environment they are stepping into. It's an environment that's slower. Our programs are six to nine months. Most other uh, programs similar to ours are three months or less. So we really take more time. We give them more support, more time with their instructors. Um, um, we break down the program um, in, a, in a longer format. All these, it's because we know that's what works for someone with uh, no IT background. Yeah, that certainly makes sense. So IT, that's a that's that's a pretty big, big area. Mm -hmm. So I say, yep, yeah, this this sounds pretty good to me. What what are the common if there are common career paths or what are the skills that y'all are teaching? Great question. Um, yes, IT is very big, and that's one thing I tell people is that we specifically in um, only focus on two career tracks, which is Linux system administration and AWS cloud computing. And the reason why we do that is because we, we want to stay in an area where we are subject matter experts, that's one. Second, it's because there are so many ways to get into the industry, we want to uh, lessen the options, the, the, the tyranny of choice that might uh, um, arise when someone is making that decision. So we, we have two tracks. We make sure um, the track is um, fits what you're trying to accomplish. And then we go in it and we put some um, horse blinders on you and we help you get to the, to the destination. So basically after you get uh, you finish our program, you, you know exactly what your job title is gonna be. You know exactly what, what you're gonna be doing. The employer who is gonna um, employ you as well knows exactly what value you are able to add to their environment. So it's a very specific type of training that leaves uh, very little to chance. So that's why we only choose two career tracks. Makes a ton of sense. So because I know very little about this, uh, what is the difference between those two tracks? Yes. So um, Linux system administration, Linux is just another operating system. Um, most people are familiar with uh, their um, Apple operating system or their Windows operating system. These are commercial personal use operating system. If you use a device of any sort, um, uh, in a, uh, um, a smart device of any sort, there is an operating system that ties the physical device to all the application you're using. Um, these are typically um, iOS or Microsoft, but in enterprise environment, they use enterprise level operating system. And the, the most important one is, a, is called Linux. And this is the, um, operating system you find in 90 plus percent of all the servers out there. So Google uh, runs their servers um, on uh, Linux, um, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. Any big uh, organization you see out there that has a lot of um, computing power that they're managing, they almost surely uh, use Linux. 
So we train you to become a system administrator that, that can go into those environments and help uh, um, the employers, the companies manage their um, systems at an enterprise level. So that's the first track. The second track builds on the first. The second track is cloud computing. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about cloud computing, sure. but most people don't realize that um, AWS, which is the biggest cloud computing platform out there, is run 100% on Linux. So, um, so our second track is a continuation of our first track. Because, because we are Linux subject matter expert, we stay in that realm of Linux uh, um, and we build on it. So you can either choose to become just a Linux system administrator or you can learn Linux, but add cloud computing to be able to not only help people with their um, physical Linux servers, but help them manage their infrastructure in a cloud computing environment. Basically cloud computing is just an abstraction of a real operating system somewhere else. So that's, that's, that's our two tracks. And um, yeah, this is where we have a combined uh, expertise in our team of over 30 years, maybe 40 years even. So we stay there, we design programs around that um, topic and um, we try to stay relevant to the market. I love it. So the six to nine month programs, what kind of time commitment is that on a weekly basis typically? Um, seven to ten hours is what we 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 find as um, the sweet spot. So someone needs to be able to commit to that minimum of seven to ten hours a week. So um, if if that's not the case for you, uh, this is going to be very difficult to actually accomplish. Yeah, well, that seems like I think that that sounds really reasonable. So, and I imagine most folks are coming and they're still working at their other gig. As they're yes. transitioning. Yeah, we cater almost 100% to people with jobs, with careers, with a family. So all that is taken into consideration. Like all uh, our, our program, um, all the live um, sessions are in the evening. Um, because this is the time we, we find that um, that's better for most people. Of course, there are people that works at night. But um, 7 to 9 p.m. is where we can catch the most people in general. So, yeah, seems reasonable. So I graduate from the, the Linux track. Am, am I then a, a Linux system administrator? What is the title the Linux. and yeah. how much money well, that, that's, could that's, I expect that's to earn? Well, that's the tricky part. Um, the, the titles are very loosely used. So there is gonna be some, uh, uh, the word Linux in your title, but some c companies call it Linux system engineer. Uh, the word engineer, for example, is very loosely used. Some are gonna say uh, you are a Linux system administrator or uh, a Linux support uh, technician. So the, the, the title itself uh, varies, but the job you will be doing does not vary too much. Uh, that's the first question. Um, the second is um, the sweet spot for an entry level Linux system administrator is anywhere between 75 and 85, but it depends on how well you did in your interview. It depends on where you located in the US. There are, others, uh, there are some other factors um, involved, but um, you should expect something around 75 to 85. That's your first job. But of course, beyond that, uh, I've seen, you know, um, crazy salaries that, um, of course, they are put for second job uh, situation. Yeah, certainly. And I imagine that this is a career field where it's going to be growing and there's an increased need for, for human beings to be part of it. Oh yeah. Um, I have a friend who works at AWS. Um, he told me AWS is growing at still, still growing at the pace of a startup meaning 40% year over year, and they plan that to happen in the next five years. So you imagine, basically uh, another way to put it, uh, the penetration rate for cloud computing in an enterprise environment is 5%. 5%. 
So yes, there's a lot of growing to do, a lot of growing, there's a lot of opportunity. And we still, we are very much behind in the US because um, we are not training enough um, cloud computing expert to keep up with the demand as it is now. <laughs> and it's, it, it's growing exponentially. You can imagine what's going to happen in the next 10 years. Well, let's, let's get moving, Juby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, also, and also, that's why I always say it's, it's very important to bring people with no, no IT background into the mix because there's just not enough bodies you know, learning this, this thing. So if we just rely on a retraining people with IT background or retraining people already in the field uh, for cloud computing, it's going to take too long. It's, it's not going to be enough people. So we have to do this. More people, uh, more companies have to do what I'm doing. In fact, even if I graduate and train one new cloud computing expert every day, it wouldn't be enough. So yeah, we have to get going. Got more work to be done. Love it. Yeah. Would you be the people are ready for that difference making tip? What do you have for them? Um, me, the biggest difference, um, the biggest tip I want to uh, uh, give people around that is that you have to get in this for the right reason. Um, don't get uh, into this new um, field just because of money, because um, you're going to fall in the same trap as your first career. You're going to love it for a little bit and, um, and not work on the long term. So you have to get it on it for the right reason. Learn to um, get into it to the point where you can start enjoying the work. Um, this is the most important thing I've seen in, in our eight years of um, existing. Some people just get in because they hear that they can make a lot of money. And this is, uh, this is a motivation that dies off very fast. So make sure you don't do that. Don't, you don't make that mistake is the advice I have for everyone. Well, I think that that is great stuff that definitely gets, come on. Juby, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you? How can they, how can they get involved with Yellowtail Tech? Um, Yellowtail.tech is the website. And you can find us on Instagram, Yellowtail.tech, on um, or Facebook, Yellowtail.tech, anywhere. You can just type Yellowtail.tech, you'll find us. Love it. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show Juby your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to yellowtail.tech and find out if this could be a good opportunity for you. I'll list all the, all the different places in the notes of the show. Thanks again, Juby. Thank you, George, for having me. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight. We are all in this together.